Welcome to Bible Talk class. Today we are privileged to have you with us to talk about a very important and a pressing issue, remnant. And I want to see if we can share a new perspective on this idea. Before we start, kindly subscribe if you are here to be a member of Bible Talk class so that you can receive new episodes from us on the Bible. And it's free of charge. You don't pay any money anytime you subscribe. And when you receive the videos, you can decide to watch it or not. No subscription fees applied. Kindly like this video that we are sharing with you today. You just click on the like. You don't pay anything. And the more you click, the more the world will get to know that we are here for good. And share the video with your friends, your church, your family, and the entire world. Thank you very much for being a member of Bible Talk class. Now, let's begin to look at this topic carefully. You see, this topic is very interesting. Why? Because, to some degree, our self-understanding, our mission, and our message are rooted in the concept of remnant. We are special people. That is the sense that we have. Some feel that our loss of this concept would mean a loss of identity. If we cease to be remnant, then we do not exist. Some Adventists, Seventh-day Adventists, have felt the need to review the application of this concept to the church. Some feel that, no, we are not the only remnants and that we should reconsider this application of this uh, concept to us as special people. In this presentation, we will look at the contemporary Adventist thinking, biblical understanding of the concept, and end time remnant movement, a proposal that we would like to share. And that was a new perspective. Now, remnant, the contemporary Adventist thinking. Consequently, new proposals have been put forth because of the debate that has been raging. The first view that some Adventists hold today is that Revelation chapter 12 verse 17 and chapter 90 verse 10 describe the seven-day Adventists as the remnant, as the remnant. Now, God's remnant comprises Adventists and non-Adventists. This is the second view. The third view is that there is a remnant within remnant in the Adventist church. So there are few people that are God's people within the Seventh-day Adventist church. So the Seventh-day Adventist church is a remnant. Yes, we understand. But there are a few people within that remnant of the church. So that's the third view. The fourth view is that the remnant is an invisible entity because God's kingdom on earth is beyond any religious movement. Therefore, consider it as more or less a spiritual entity. The fifth view is a eschatological remnant of quality of life and faith in the future. This view is simply saying that this is a prophecy and that Revelation chapter 12 verse 17 is prophetic. It's looking forward to uh, people that will emerge just before Jesus comes. And so we should not look at it as an identity or identifiable mark of the church in our time. We should look forward to it in the future. The C's view, which is the last view, is people who have an interest in social issues are remnant. So if you have interest in making sure that every human being has human rights um, in the world, then it means that you belong to the remnant, people who are pursuing the cause of God. And so that is the C's view. Now let's look at the biblical understanding of the concept remnant. We give you the Old Testament. A remnant is left to experience God's promise. By the way, let me simply say that the word remnant, the English, simply means what is left, what is remaining. And so, in Genesis chapter 
45 verse 7, Joseph told his brothers that God sent him to Egypt so that when famine occurred in um, where Jacob and his family were living, they would come to Egypt to find food. And that Joseph was brought there so that the family of Jacob will not be in extension. The idea of remnant is used here in reference to perpetuation of a generation. In other words, generation must live on. That is a concept. Now, Amos talks about a remnant that was not strong to fight. Amos chapter 5, verse 3, chapter 6, verses 9 to 10. Thousand will go to war, but hundred will remain. The remaining hundred cannot fight. So the red remnant here is used in terms of inadequacy to defend yourselves because the number of your people will be less to protect you. Isaiah and Ezekiel mentioned those who survived Babylon's attack as remnants. So those survivors are considered remnants. Many people were scattered abroad. The ones who remained in Jerusalem were considered remnant, those who were left, the survivors. The faithful and those transformed to be faithful are termed as remnants. And so when you read Genesis chapter 6, verse 10, the text says that Noah was faithful. And because he was faithful, God saved him and his family. So the word remnant can be used in reference to faithfulness. In the Old Testament, God will form a scatological remnant. Zechariah chapter 13 verses 8 to 9. So in the last days, in the prophetic ministry of Zechariah, God showed him that a few people will be saved and protected from any harm. So that concept was also presented in the Old Testament. Let's go to the New Testament and appreciate the understanding. The true sons of Abraham are identified in Matthew chapter 3 verses 7 to 9. Here, in Jesus' encounter with the Pharisees, he pointed out to them that true sons of Abraham are those who bear fruits of repentance. So, we are looking at people in Israel who bear fruits of repentance, which suggests that not all the Israelites were indeed true sons of Abraham. Few fruit bearers were the true sons of Abraham. And this point is very important, even though the whole of Israel, the nation Israel, belonged to God, yet few were considered to be true sons of Abraham, according to Jesus. Citizens of God's kingdom are those who repent and believe the good news. Mark chapter 1, verse 15. To Paul, physical Israel that believed formed a remnant. But the believing Jews and Gentiles formed God's people in the end time. And that's what Paul teaches in his writings. In summary, the concept in both the Old Testament and the New Testament has quantitative and qualitative values. Let me repeat. In summary, the concept of remnant, what is left, the remaining, in both the Old Testament and New Testament, has quantitative and qualitative values. Meaning, a description of what is left and or the faithful. And so it is important that we appreciate this uh, understanding of what remnant is. Remnant has two specific meanings. One, it means quantity, number, what is left. Two, qualitative, it means a show of an identity. That is what remnant means in both Old Testament and New Testament. Now let's look at our proposal. And we call the proposal End Time Remnant Movement. Now, Revelation chapter 12, verse 17, is a key to the identity of the end time remnant. And I read, 
Then the dragon was enraged at the woman and went off to make war against the rest of her offspring, those who obey God's commandments and hold to the testimony of Jesus, NIV. In the book of Revelation, the remnant is an end-time entity, and the remnant should be working with God to gather people from the dark world of Babylon. Revelation chapter 14, verses 6 to 12. Chapter 18, verse 4. This is a message that they are God's end time people who are gospel bearers, telling people to leave Babylon to become the citizens of God's kingdom. The remnant in Revelation chapter 12, verse 17 has the following features notable ones. They are connected to the woman who survived the persecution. And protection of God for 1260 days. And if you are looking at the specific fulfillment of the persecution and the protection of the woman here, identified as a church of God or people of God, we are looking at 538 to 1798 period. The remnants become the main target of the sea and the land beast in Revelation. Chapters 13 to 14. They are the object of persecution. And that is a picture we see here. The remnants are visible because they keep God's commandments. So we are not looking at spiritual remnants that you can't identify, that you can't see. They can be seen because they are seen as people who obey God's commandments. And God's commandments require physical obedience and people must see that you are obeying God's commandments and so they are visible they are not spiritual the remnants express a total commitment to the Savior throughout Revelation this picture is very clear total commitment to the Savior they will follow him wherever he goes wherever he goes the key issue that God abhors or hates is idolatry in Revelation so the remnants are not pictured in Revelation as people who worship idols. They are pictured as people who worship God, the Creator. And the Creator set rules governing human life. Every aspect of human life is governed by the rules set by the Creator. That is a basic denominator when it comes to identifying the remnant in the book of Revelation. Revelation take on the character of the saved who are not idol worshippers is critical to this subject and that's why we are stressing this point. The remnants do not keep just one commandment of God. They keep everything that God has said, including learning how to forgive. It's part of God's commandment. Matthew chapter 18 verse 35 that if we do not forgive as our Heavenly Father has done, then we should forget it. Forget about heaven. You cannot be part of God's people when you still harbor hatred in your heart against a brother or a sister. So let's begin to appreciate who remnants are in scripture in the last days. The dichotomy of two groups of people with different destinations is painted in Revelation that if you pitch your tent with God, you have eternal life. If you pitch your tent with the evil one, you have eternal damnation or eternal destruction. Those who suffered during the 1,200 days in church history were God's people, not people confined to one geographical area. And that is one picture we must get because the remnants are the offspring of the woman or the church or people of God who were persecuted in the dark ages. In conclusion, the word remnant in Revelation chapter 12 verse 17 has quantitative and qualitative relevance in that it is described as the rest of the seed who are obedient, meaning they obey every commandment of God. Every commandment of God. All the Ten Commandments. In fact, in the list of the Ten Commandments, the first item is worship God 
and do not make or worship any image fashioned by you. That is the premise of the Ten Commandments. And in Revelation chapter 14, the whole call for repentance is worship the Creator who created heaven and the earth. That recognition is what we need to appreciate. Anyone who recognizes God as the Creator must instinctively obey every word that he has said about social, economic, political, cultural lives. All aspects of human life will be governed by the Creator's will because he has set out everything that human beings must know. And therefore, we should not restrict the identity of the remnant to one aspect of the commandments of God. In Revelation, the key point is worship of idols. That is not recognizing God as the creator, as the one who set rules for human beings to follow. That is the key point. So the remnant obey every commandment of God. Every commandment of God has the same or equal value. Now, they are bearers of the gospel, testimony of Jesus Christ. The Greek suggests people who testify about Jesus, what Jesus has done. That is why the dragon hates the remnants, because they tell people about what Jesus has done. The more they tell people about what Jesus has done, the more people are attracted to the gospel. If you belong to the few foot soldiers, in other words, the remnant, who are preparing for the coming of Jesus Christ, who are obedient to God's will, you must be part of those who preach the gospel. You must put on your evangelistic footwear and preach the gospel. We cannot leave the preaching of the gospel to only pastors. Each church member must tell the world what Jesus means to him or her. This is an identity of anyone who wants to be part of the few that will be working for God in the last days and will be saved eventually. The point is clear here. The dragon persecuted these remnants because of their persistence in obedience to God's will and being the bearers of the gospel. Because they are sharing their light and the dragon is not happy about this news. He wants to be worshipped. And it's important to understand this point that he will not let those who preach the gospel rest. He will also disturb them. A group of people who do the will of God and are active participants in spreading the news about the benefits of Jesus' death to the world constitute the remnant force. I repeat, a group of people who do the will of God and are active participants, active participants, not passive, in spreading the news about the benefits of Jesus' death to the world constitute the remnant force force. It's clearer. No need to repeat. In Revelation, Jesus appeals to individuals, not groups, to heed the warning of God's judgment. Now you might think that, well, okay, then the remnants are going to be saved. Revelation chapter 12 verse 17 doesn't say that the remnants are going to be saved. They are only persecuted because they obey God's will and because they testify about Jesus. And his death. That's all. But when it comes to salvation in Revelation, it is on individuals' call. Jesus appeals to individuals that let anyone who hears this message decide to either accept or not. And that person should be ready to be responsible when I dish out my judgment. And so when you read Revelation chapter 22, verse 12, Jesus says that I'm coming with my reward and I'm going to judge each one of you according to your individual works. So it is not a group salvation. It is an individual obedience based salvation that we are talking about. And so it's not a group work that we should continue to pump ourselves that we belong to a church, we belong to a group of believers and therefore we are going to be saved. That is not a picture you find. As people who are supposed to be identified as God's people on earth, individuals in that group must make sure that they are responsible to Christ. They are preaching about Jesus' death, his resurrection, his second coming to the world. Individuals. 
and that individuals are also obeying the will of God. Jesus said that not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will be saved, but the one who does the will of God is simple. And the will of God is broad in scripture, including learning to forgive a brother or a sister. Recognize God as the creator, keeping the seventh day Sabbath, obeying your parents, not harboring heaviness in your heart against anyone, being truthful in all matters, learning to be faithful in everything that you do, and also obeying the commission of Christ that go and preach. This is also a commandment of God. Go ye therefore and preach. It's a commandment. And as disciples of Christ, we must pursue this agenda. In fact, in Matthew chapter 24, verses 12 to 14, Jesus makes clear that his coming will be actually moved by the proclamation of the gospel. So the gospel will be preached throughout the world before I come. And here we are looking at the remnant. Those who claim to be remnant must be evangelists. Not public evangelism we are talking about here. Individuals must share their experience with in Christ. The last day people of God are special because of their identity and mission. The identity and mission put together make them remnants, the remaining people of God. The number, they are people, they are human beings. The quality is that they are obedient to every word of God. Every word of God. And that they tell people about Jesus. His death, his resurrection, his second coming, and our hope of resurrection. These are active participants in the spread of the gospel of Jesus Christ. In the word, the word remnant is a verb, not a title. Thank you very much for being with us. And we appreciate you so much for being a member of Bible Talk class. Continue to partner us as we share the word of God with the world. The more you share, the more you become part of the movement as we prepare for the soon coming of Jesus. If you like this video, I would like to let people know, please share, free of charge. You don't pay anything. And leave a comment below if you have any questions. Thank you so much and God bless you. To you shall begin Come enter my joy Sit down on my throne Bright crowns are in